the Big Figures podcast. Myself, Nathan Bank. We've got Curtis Felix Jr. in the building. What's going on, my bro? You What's good, going yeah? on? Respect, bro. Yeah, man. Blessed for coming to and. <laughs> Turned over in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. 11 professional fights. Yeah. Yep. 10 wins. One loss. One loss, man. That was your last time out. That was at York Court. What was that? November? November 30th. Yeah. November 30th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was an English welterweight title fight. So, yeah. Can we talk on this one quickly? We'll start at the end and jump back to the beginning. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. First, how did that fight come about? Like, how? what makes you eligible for a title fight? For that one, I got a. Uh, Uh, what's it called an eliminator so I had to Mm. do an English eliminator to be eligible for that I think the only thing you really have to do is have a certain fight uh, like an eight round fight or a ten round fight to be eligible Mm. to fight for a title Mm. I got a chance to fight the eliminator which obviously led on to the fighting for the English that was tell me if I pronounce his name wrong Echo 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 Essuman Essuman yeah Yeah, Essuman yeah yeah. alright so what's what's your take on him firstly has your opinion changed since before the fight no. <laughs> no. All right. So, what's your take on him? How yeah, do you, no, how I do you thought see he was good before the fight. Mm. I thought he was good before the fight. He beat me, but I don't think he's better than me. You got to beat mm. me more than once for me to think you're better than me. Yeah, so that's see. that's how my mind is set. But yeah, taking nothing away from mm. him, he, he was good. He was good. Um, I just I didn't turn up. That's how I feel. That's how I feel in myself. I didn't yeah. turn up more than being overwhelmed it was you felt like you he overwhelmed he, uh, he did overwhelm me on the day mm. but that's because i didn't turn up it was that's, on you it weren't that he was just i think much. i yeah, yeah i think i lost the fight yeah, I don't think he won. that's a good way yeah, to put it he, i think i lost yeah, it rather yeah, yeah, than yeah. him winning it mm. but like i said i, I don't want to take nothing away from him he's mm. good he's top 10 ranked in the uk isn't he yeah like he's top five or something top like five that. now so yeah he's he's, he's good I th- he's yeah. probably gonna go on and you know challenge for the british title and everything so do you reckon there would ever be the opportunity for a rematch or <laughs> mm. I like a rematch man that's mm. my goal isn't it <laughs> yeah that is the goal my you're, goal, you're gonna my chase goal that now mm. is redemption is, is, is mm. catching up with Echo man Feel what's it. it gonna take for that just keep fighting keep winning build mm. it back up man mm. took me three years to get to that position so you know it might take me another three years but that's mm. that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do man get back up there yeah. I reckon he'll be I reckon he'll be British champion yeah so yeah, I can't lie. Watching the fight, mm. I was impressed by him. Yeah, yeah, like, he's good. Not even to say not impressed by you. Mm. I've just seen you just beat these guys up in it. All yeah, your fights, yeah, you'll yeah, go in yeah. there and it's just like, yeah, you can see. Even if the guys, sometimes they've been all right, mm. but it's like, Curtis is just above them, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. Whenever it's going to happen, you're going to win the fight. Like, yeah. so they've challenged, but then I saw him, I was like, okay. So yeah, it's, there's it's obviously, fight, <laughs> there's levels to this now. I'm yeah, seeing him, yeah, I'm yeah. like, all right, I respect it. Did it mean something to you to have the undefeated record? Yeah. <laughs> it did, yeah. <laughs> it did. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. Something, um, something more than just a good feeling, like, or it, as in, it was nice to have, but you don't mind that you ain't got, or it's something I don't that, mi- Now mm. I don't mind that I don't have it, mm. but I'm not a loser, I'm a winner. Mm. So to lose is, just goes against what I am. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> it was so, it was painful, man. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. In your opinion, then did did Mayweather ruin boxing? And look, no, I'm not gonna say he ruined mm. it, but he set the bar high now. Mm. He set the bar high for everybody, and obviously in my head, I'm like, turn bro, thinking, yeah, I want to do a Mayweather and, and the, just go through. See, you undefeated. can feel that impression with everyone. In. You watch exactly. people, and it's like, yeah, they everyone wanna, wants to stay undefeated. They, exactly. Kind of like before that. Not that man a bear old or anything, but looking back and you see who used to fight who and all these things. Everybody there, used like, to fight everybody. But a lot, they'd expect yeah. to lose, whereas now it's like something's been took away maybe. But I wanted to get your perspective on that one. Yeah, yeah. I think he... I'm not going to say he ruined it because mm. he ain't ruined it, man. Mm. But everybody just wants to emulate that. Yeah. And uh, it just stops people from fighting, man. It mm. stops people from fighting different... Like, people are like, I don't want to mm. lose, so... Yeah. And then yeah. you're seeing, like, with when people are picked up by some they cherry pick fights for their fighter now and like so you exactly. get people with a big record like Wilder and it's like you fought who have you fought I'm not going to draw Wilder in because yeah, I'm not Wilder... cussing him because I like Wilder but <laughs> let me just put that as a disclaimer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Wilder's mm. fought people I think mm. Wilder will fight he'll probably fight anybody I think but there's fighters mm. out there at the top who should fight people mm. but don't you think it's the fighters because me I'm, I'm an outsider I'm not in boxing but I look on it as if 
I the think fighters it's, would fight anyone. I feel like it's, it's part, the people it's around partly him. the fighter. It's mm. partly the manager. Because mm. these managers can make the fight, but they don't try to make the fight. The fighters could ask for the fight, but they don't try. They don't ask for the fight. So yeah. for, that's what I I don't know. But mm. you know, from what you read and see, yeah. that's the impression I get that people ain't trying to make these fights. Um, um you know, for example, Canelo's at the top, mm. and there's people he could fight. Uh, you know, you got the Char- one of the Charlo brothers he could fight, but it's a dangerous fight, and it's like I'm not gonna. F- I just get the feeling they don't want to fight because you know. Mm. You, Canelo could lose that. Got more to lose. You know, he's got. Game. He's, he's got. I yeah. know, but he could lose again. And I wouldn't say he's ruined it, but he's yeah. he's just. Uh, he's in. He's, there's he's, been a change now. Yeah. He's altered the landscape. Exactly. Now he's made yeah. it more of a thing. Before it's a con. It's a combat sport. So mm. people, you're gonna win. You're gonna lose. Yeah. Since him, it's like people don't want to lose. Exactly. What does it actually mean? to be a pro boxer? Like, what's the difference between a pro and an amateur <clears throat> other than taking off the head guards and, like, what's, what changes? Mentality. Mm. You know, looking at looking at it from the outside, you you, you don't have... Uh, you have different gloves, for example. So you, oh, okay. You ste- yeah. I was, I'm stepping in with eight-ounce gloves mm. uh, as opposed to 14s or 12s or whatever they are. That's, it's quite like, a big difference. It's a big mm. difference. For me, the training regime is a lot different. Mm. Before training twice a day, now it's potentially three four times a day mm. you know it's just a lot more serious it's harder man 10 rounds is, is hard it's hard to do four rounds is all right three rounds you know three rounds ain't nothing so an amateur is limited to a, four rounds as an amateur it's three rounds three rounds it back in the day it used three. to be four mm. rounds oh, okay yeah but now it's three rounds as an amateur and that's three three minute rounds three mm. three minute rounds now nah, that's a joke if i do that it's not enough getting take, warmed up it take, like, it take me yeah. three rounds to warm up yeah. so just looking at it from that perspective just on the outside perspective uh just that's it really but when you get deep in it it's it's a lot of politics and that's why they say it's a business mm. and amateur boxing is a sport there's a lot of politics yeah. involved in uh, professional boxing and yeah it's, it's just more serious it's, it's a profession isn't it yeah. so how do you turn pro you got to get a license, you got to apply for a license. The board then come and they might come and watch you train or whatever. You got to have mm. a meeting, you got to have a brain scan, you got to have medicals, blood tests. There's a big financial side to it as well. You got to pay for all of that. Mm. And it's out of your own pocket. Out of your own pocket. Mm. And that's why a lot of fighters want they they're asking for sponsorships and stuff because mm. you know, that could all mount up to 2 grand <laughs> mm. before you're fighting. There's big money there that you got to fork out, but it's an investment. I've seen it as an investment. I hope one day that I get a return on that investment. So yeah, that kind of leads to the next question. Where does the money come from? Well, initially, initially, mm. there's no money. Mm. So even <laughs> from you turn pro, you you do you all this, money. you pay your two grand, you, you, you turn you, pro now. And you you got to mm. draw in crowds. You draw in yeah. the crowds, you, you draw in the money. Yeah. But if you ain't drawing in big crowds, mm. I don't draw in big crowd. I don't get much support. That's not me trying to sob make a sob story but I'm just saying as it is yeah I don't I don't make that much money but there's fighters out there that make a lot of money at this level oh for real so it's not like you have to be known nationally to I mean if you start fighting on TV it's different Mm. because you're getting you're getting money from the TV I don't know how it works but you're getting different kind of money then do you know how you would even get into them scenarios where you are fighting on TV Uh, so you got obviously promoters Mm. and managers who have TV licenses and stuff Mm. so if you're under one of them Mm. you're going to you probably be fighting on TV. It will make the journey a lot easier, but I ain't got that journey, so it is what it is. Mm. <laughs> so then, what would your route be? What would my route be? Mm. I'm taking. The, I feel like I'm taking the hard way, man. I've got to bang out these tickets. I've got mm. to bring in the crowds, and I've got to. I'm just. I'll. I'll, f- I'll fight anybody really at this yeah. stage. Yeah. Uh, just trying to get up there. You do these fights. You sell the tickets. Keep winning. Keep winning. And where does it? Where does it lead? Is it tight? Is it a title shot route? And then once you've got a belt. That would get you seen by a different promoter I've, I've, with a TV relationship, or so. I mean, if you if you if you're the best, you're gonna mm. you're gonna yeah. you're gonna get the title, and you're gonna get the opportunity to fight on big shows and get paid big money. Like with a lot of industries, if you know the people coming in, you can get bought in and get the easy route. If exactly. not, you just gotta fight, gotta win, and That's it. get the attention exactly. somehow. Talk me through an average day in the life, like from wake up, <laughs> go and sleep. If I'm in camp. Uh, I usually get up early. Mm. I've got to get myself to London um, in Hammersmith State of Mind Fitness so I can train. I do my training, so I have sparring or conditioning or pad work or something. Uh, after after we've done that, might do a little bit more. And then it's back back home, grab a bite to eat, 
sometimes I have one meal a day. Last mm. last couple of camps I've been doing more than one meal a day, but I'll eat and then uh, for me because I'm I, I need to work. I'm working in the afternoon, mm. and I have to squeeze a run in. I'll either squeeze a run in and then do a circuit or just do a circuit or something like that. Uh, so to elaborate on a couple of them things, so where you say you need to work as in outside of the boxing something yeah. at this level now initially you at this do level yeah. things to, to get through camp so i can yeah. you know buy buy the food that i need you know travel to london and stuff yeah. so that's a daily thing you'd be traveling from so london i don't go every day to, but yeah. i'll go but like, the times when you are training yeah, yeah it's yeah. always in london so yeah. you know oh, okay and on the nutrition side of it who who prescribes your nutrition do you have a nutritionist i don't or? have a nutritionist mm. so who who does that's all for just my, yourself for my last two fights mm. My trainer's been helping me yeah. with uh, my diet. Mm. Um, but prior to that, my idea of diet was just don't eat meat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's all I used to do, just not eat meat, mm. cut right. out all the bad food. So yeah, when we come off camera, then we're going to have a different discussion. Then the car. <laughs> man can do these things, bro. We can talk on the nutrition. Thing okay, now. okay. Yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah. bro. Man, on that. Talk me through your team. Like, do you have around, you said your coach. So I've just, yeah, I've got a coach. Um in my trainer there that's two different people or the same I've got, I've got one trainer his name mm. is Barry O'Connell that is oh, my okay. trainer obviously my dad always helps me with different bits yeah, and bobs yeah. you know my trainer is, is Barry O'Connell he helps me with everything pads he hooks up my sparring he helps me with uh, like I say my diet and things like that so yeah. you've yeah. been with him your whole pro career yeah I have yeah. Yeah. so how does this life then fit in because obviously you've got a family you've got kids like, <sighs> it's hard it's all hard in? it's all hard mm. man when I'm in camp I don't get on with my girlfriend Mm. I don't get on with, like I get on with my kids, but I don't get to. I hear you. I'm, it's, mm. If you're for mm. me, I'm, when I'm training for a fight, mm. that's what's on my mind, and it's very difficult for me then to just act normal mm. because I know in a few weeks' time I'm getting in front of you know a few thousand people mm. and fighting for my life. So yeah. yeah, it's difficult, man. It's very difficult, and it's like my last my last two camps is a pain because. I was, I just feel like I miss out on my kids' lives because there's certain things that I'm not mm. doing and there's always things happening in camp, like people have parties and stuff and mm. I don't go to the party and people think it's because I don't want to go. It's not because I don't want to go, it's just... Kind of like you're living, you feel like you're living two lives. It's like I'm trying to do this, but then I've got my family here and... It's all difficult, yeah. exactly that, man. It's mm. all difficult. Out of camp is fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's literally... You when can draw. It's not a day-to-day -day thing. You can draw a line in it. I train every day. Camp but mode. Camp, camp mode is. Mm. It's just different on the mind, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know I've got a fight, so it's, yeah. that's my focus. And people, a lot of people don't get it, man. Mm. A lot of people don't understand. No, I get it. <laughs> I do understand still. Yeah. Only when I was planning this out, you know, I'm thinking about it, and I look back on it, and we known each other twenty years, bro. It's a long time, bro. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> it's a obviously, man, a lot of things <laughs> change in them twenty years, yeah. and that man grow up and all these things there, but. I know you used to love fighting yeah. outside of the room. Yeah. <laughs> is that something that's, that's changed? That's, do you think that's something that you you grow out of? Even if you might stop it, life changes, man. Mm. So that's actually left you. That's left life your changes, if, yeah. if we're out and I'm on... No, nah, it man's hasn't left me. You, if the I, wrong, you still it, feel the same. I think my, I'm hot-headed, isn't it? Mm. So that I'm ain't changed. It's still but there. I, I, mm. I, ain't, I haven't had a, a, a street fight or a fist fight mm. with a man... In years, mm. so it's like the, the feelings there, but it's like you won't act on it and you don't put yourself in the same situation. I'll act on it, but it just don't come up like that yeah. no more. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, in a different no, space, yeah. man. Mm. I'm in a different space. Mm. If I'm out and people are rude and things like that, that's what frustrates me. Mm. So I usually end up getting in arguments and stuff with people yeah. in Tesco's and that. <laughs> I need to just calm down. Yeah, and I'm like, nah, I want to whatever but mm. you know when you're a kid it's different isn't it because you you're not sensible yeah so just... i've done silly things mm. i've licked a man on on bridge street for example mm. it's busy it's middle of the night and it's mm. like you're obviously gonna get it's, it's just you're, yeah. you're just not thinking the fire's there the same emotions there but then it's like i'm a bit more sensible you're not gonna because before it used to be a thing like before man even know there's an argument happening it's like all oh, right man's lick somebody and this and that and yeah so, i was a silly kid mm. man but i think it was more so i like the attention mm. i like to be in the mix you know yeah, that i used yeah, to like yeah, being yeah. in the mix and stuff <laughs> so if yeah. there's things popping off i was i'll, I'll be there on I'm the forefront to get but... involved <laughs> <laughs> no but then things are yeah. people change in it things mm. change so yeah. do you think that that streak though helps you as a boxer do you Definitely. think it's possible to be a top level boxer if you don't have that? No. 
you got to have fight in it. You've got to mm. have fight in you. Yeah. You've got to be able to fight. And I don't think you're going to get to the top if you, you can't dig deep. Uh, so how do you think a fighter should conduct themselves outside of the ring? Like, you see, you got certain, certain man, like a Chisora, throwing tables and all these kind of things there. What's your take on all that? <sighs> it sells, man. Mm. It's a heated sport. It's emotions mm. running wild and that. Mm. You shouldn't do that, but... It you goes feel like back you shouldn't. To, you shouldn't mm. do that, but it goes back to mm. what we were saying. You've got to have that streak in you if you want to do this. Mm. And if you're getting people in a room who have that streak in them, mm. things like that are going to pop off, man. People are going to throw... It's going to happen. Yeah, I can't lie. To me, like I like that in it. Like, if you punch man in the face for a living, you shouldn't really think you should be hot-headed, innit? But you you should, should be able to control it. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Like Throwing tables, that's a bit extra. <laughs> but like, <laughs> all right, take... take um. Still Chisora, take David Hay and Chisora where they had that, that fight, fight in the press yeah. conference. Yeah. It's like, I see that and I'm just like, that's what you're really supposed to do then. Because otherwise, you ain't necessarily, not even supposed to do. It don't make it right. I'm not even condoning it. But if I'm going to buy into a fighter, yeah, that's what I'm buying in- I'm buying into the fighter. You, you know when mm. they're doing things like that, you know that the sport means something to them. Mm. On the flip side, you had mm. flipping, what's his name? Tyson Fury picked up that picked up that guy. They're yeah, meant to be yeah, fighting. The man picked him up. Yeah, and me and my yeah, dad said, yeah. "That's a farce, man. You can't mm. be picking up man, and you're gonna be fighting <laughs> like tomorrow. It doesn't, it's yeah, it's I, not a good look." Mm. And I don't. When when you see that, then you uh, you're not interested in the fight because mm. if you like, you can pick a man up mm. as a joke, mm. and then you're gonna fight tomorrow. Yeah, I feel the two say, don't correlate. With Tyson Fury, I feel say he's he's quite intelligent. Yeah. So I feel say he will do. Aside from the, like a Chisora, I feel like he's more doing it, as you said, it sells. Yeah. He's doing that to get in bigger fights in the future. Whereas a Tyson Fury, I feel like he's doing it to get inside his opponent's head. Like he's just yeah. ramping okay. with him yeah, just yeah. to say, yeah, yeah, whatever anyone else thinks that's cool. Yeah. I'll just pick you up, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who's your current pound for pound number one? Right now, it mm. has to be um, Crawford mm. for me. Yeah. Crawford. Okay. Or Canelo. Yeah, probably Canelo, yeah. then Crawford. Yeah, I, I was thinking Canelo. So you're not a fan of like a Lomachenko? I'm not saying I'm not a fan, but mm. I'm not, not going to put him up there mm. right now. Yeah. Everyone keeps saying he is pound for pound, but the mm. bottom line is he ain't really fought a lot of people. There's people that he could fight, but again, it comes down to everybody wanting to not lose. So they, they, they the fights ain't being made. Yeah. The fights that people really want to see mm. aren't being made. I would say Canelo, in my opinion. Still. Yeah, Canelo, yeah. yeah. I, I after, that last, after that last literally, fight... Literally, Kovalev. After when he, I saw that Kovalev fight, that's what I was like, boy. When he knocked him out, that was mm. it. I sent a text, I said, that's it. He's, yeah. he's, he's the best. Yeah. He's the best pound for pound. He has to be. I weren't, I weren't a big fan before. Not even that he's not a good boxer, yeah. but I weren't like... I weren't a massive fan. Mm. Not to, to say I'm a massive fan now, but when I saw that, I was like, all right, that's what the hype's about then. Yeah, that's yeah. why he, he... To be fair mm. to him, I've always been a fan, yeah. Yeah. All right, so who's your favourite boxer just in general? Someone who's an idol to you, someone you look up to, some... Yeah, I like mm. Muhammad Ali. Mm. I like Pernell Whitaker. Mm. Floyd Mayweather, Roy Jones Jr. I ain't really got a favourite, but these are the people that I like to watch. Mm. If I'm going to watch anybody, you could put on these people. Yeah. Roy Jones, yeah. I remember my first fight, I just spent the morning watching Roy Jones. Who's yours? There's different things I like about different people. E- exactly, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, like, <laughs> Muhammad Ali, yeah. in the ring and out of the ring. Exactly. I'll, I'll yeah. listen to him talk, and I'll just yeah. listen to his speeches and all them things, and I'm just like, yeah, I was actually, it's a different era, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. he's a well-educated man. I like Tyson as a fighter, just yeah. early Tyson. Early Tyson. When yeah. I look back at them fights, I'm just like, yeah. I rate anyone who even stepped in the ring to fight him. Like his first twenty odd fights or whatever. Just knock him man out. I rate anyone who come. Anyone who stepped in the ring, I'm just like, yeah, I respect it because he looked ferocious. We went school together, yeah. Mm-hmm. From from middle school, so from middle I was school. in year five, yeah. From my perspective in the year below, I didn't know everyone would be like, oh, Curtis is the hardest in the year or whatever. No one said that though. Yeah. I I am gonna say no one said that, but I don't know for a fact. Okay, so yeah, yeah, to me. I didn't view it as that, like yeah. to say, Curtis is the hardest thing. Da, da, da. Gone through middle school, middle school, middle school. I'm a year younger than you. So year eight, you've gone up to upper school. Upper school, yeah, yeah. When I'm in year eight, you're in year nine. Yeah. So I ain't seen you for a year. Yeah. You ain't seen nothing for a year. I've come up to upper school the following year. Yeah. 
next thing just talks normal talks and then oh so who's the hardest in year 10 and everyone's like oh do you know what yeah it's either Curtis Curtis Felix Leon Cosford or um, Ricky Knight I can't remember who said it to me yeah, yeah. but someone said when I first come up to the school innit yeah. so I'm thinking alright then yeah, yeah maybe like who knows innit I'm thinking Curtis weren't really like that in middle school so let's see I'm seeing Ricky Knight running around the school come on come on <laughs> middle school, like, I'm thinking just in my head just looking I'm thinking it's probably him like <laughs> He looked like one of them cotton boys, in it, man? Yeah, Bella, yeah. Davis, up! All this stuff. Yeah. I'm thinking, all right, yeah, it's probably him. Next thing, can't think who. These are all just, you know, you have little memories, but this was at the start of my year nine. I'm just, because you know there's a change. You come from Mayway Middle to Mayway Upper. There's a, yeah, there there's was a change. A change there's innit? a change, like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's much more Bry Hill youths and co- yeah, yeah. it's a different atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just getting to grips with the atmosphere now. And you've ended up having a fight with somebody. But it's like, I ain't seen... The f- it's not a fight yet. It's like an argument face-to-face with you. And I've seen you headbutt the guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember You this. remember that? Because I can't even remember who the guy is, innit? Yeah. But I remember that was the moment where I was like... Yeah. Curtis is one of the hard kids now. <laughs> it's like, you know, like from middle school, yeah? It's like, I'm thinking... You don't headbutt someone unless you fight. Like, yeah. if you don't really fight, you're going to try swing or something. Yeah. From that, I was like, yeah, Curtis fights now. He's actually one of the hard kids. I now. don't like, think I was the hard kid, but the mm. people that would actually fight mm. are considered to be hard. There's pro- there was probably yeah. harder kids in school. There was definitely but harder kids in the school. school. It was about if but you're going to... Mm. Are you going to yeah. back it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's, that's, mm. And then that was what determined whether or mm. not he was hard. Mm. And I think people realised... That would, I would, if you I argue like, with Curtis, he's gonna box you in the we, face. We're gonna like, fight, yeah. man. Yeah. The reason I said that whole story, yeah, yeah, I wanted to know if, from your perspective, you've seen it the same way. Like to me, there was a year where I didn't see you, yeah, and then next time I've seen you, it's like, yeah, Curtis is on it. Like, do you actually? So you recall well, a change? Listen, happening. like you say, mm. yeah, when you got from Mirway mm. up into upper school, mm. there was a lot of different kids about different demographics, and you, and you, mm. and you had to be a certain way. Mm. Because otherwise, these kids, yeah, we're talking about how old was when you go into year nine? 13. Some of these youths mm. have already been stealing cars. Yeah, so driving to school in that motorbike. No, no, that's, that's, that's real. Trust me. Them man would be driving mm. driving cars in that. So it's either yeah. you be eaten or, or you, you know what I mean? You got to stick mm. up for yourself. So I just yeah. thought, you know what? I just remember thinking, yeah, well, I've got to just, you got to change, man. Mm. You got to move with the, you got to move with the, uh, the, the, the tide, yeah. as it were. And I yeah. think that's what it was. And uh, a lot of people didn't really back it. There's a lot of people that talked talked the big game but didn't back it in school. When it was crunch time, <laughs> it weren't on it, man. <laughs> it's weird, yeah, because we went to school together, but these are like unspoken conversations. Yeah, yeah. had these conversations, innit? And nah, it's like, yeah, yeah. did you ever feel under pressure in mere way? What do you mean? In what way? Not under pressure in a fair way, mm. just under... P- it weren't like a relaxed environment. Necessary. No, it weren't a relaxed environment. It's not a place you're gonna let your hair down. I let my hair down, mm. but it weren't a relaxed environment. Mm. You come up, if if you was around the wrong people, you I was mm. uncomfortable. And mm. it's obviously there, there weren't many. Too, there weren't too many mm. black people in our school. For and real? I think to be honest, mm. it came down to that. And a lot of people, there was a lot of racism about in school. People mm. calling me monkey and all these mm. kind of things. Mm. A lot of people calling me, you know, I'm gonna start saying it on camera. A lot of people saying this and that. Mm. You know, kids coming to school to fight me and all this. I was under pressure, man, but. Mm. That we the, the weed alleviated the pressure, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a different, it's a different thing because it's, it's not it's even for me from my perspective. The youths in school was cool. Yeah. It was the youths that didn't go to school. It, it, that's where that's where the problem that's was. That's where it got long. That's where the problem was. Man, These youths are coming. Thirteen, and you got a nineteen-year-old you in the subway wants to fight you over mm-hmm. some his girlfriend who's in your class. This is it. <laughs> this is it. You know, we was talk- I was like, talking mm. with my brother about this. When the man come up to the school, I'm going to start saying names on camera. Mm. Big you, man, big man, mm. like 19, mm. 20, whatever. In mm. comparison to a 15, 14 year old, that's a big you. And he came mm. up to the school with a hammer to fight me. Mm. And I remember running into the school. The teachers didn't mm. stop him. They come running mm. in the school, run through the school. I had to hide in one classroom. Um, and then school rang my brother. My brother had to come and pick me up. Mm. And it was my brother I was speaking to the other day, and he said, well, I remember coming to school to pick you up and going to have a word with the you, the guys. And he, he said mm. he went down the subway, and they was all just big men, mm. big, big, big crosses, big motorbikes. He thought, rah, 
I'm here now, so he backed it. But yeah. there's a lot of kids from out of school causing causing trouble, man. They ain't got nothing better to do, so for whatever. Yeah, different. Oh, different times, man. anyway, man. Cause obviously, at the time, like you say, you're a kid. We all hold face in it, yeah, so yeah. we wouldn't have this conversation at the time. Yeah, when yeah. we're at school, it's just like whatever in it, like, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, it's good. It's good to to look back on it now, man. It's fair to say you come from a fighting family in the sense of boxing. Yeah. yeah. I'd assume it's your dad that set pace. Your dad used to box? No, I started the boxing thing. Swear? Yeah. Mm. My dad used to do kung fu and kickboxing and all these things. Okay. And he got my brothers into kickboxing. Mm. And as a youth, I used to watch them kickbox. I mm. remember going Ritzy, if you certain man might remember Ritzy. Mm. They, they, I remember watching them do have like kickboxing matches and all that. And I used to, my dad used to make me go to gym and do kickboxing. And I, I always tell this story. I, I mm. thought I was smarter than my dad. I said, yeah, yeah. I want to do boxing because I thought if I do boxing, I ain't got to stretch my legs. Mm. I ain't got to use my legs. It's going to mm. be easier. But it wasn't easier. But that's how, the, that's how the boxing thing started. I started doing boxing. My dad started showing me what he knows about boxing. My big brother, Dominic, was into boxing. So he was showing me things. And mm. that's how it started from there, really. So what age is this? 14 mm. or 15. Mm. Training boxing. Uh, but obviously, yeah, I was in. I was what in about the gym kickboxing? From, kickboxing. I was doing kickboxing from early. My dad always used to make me go kickboxing. Yeah, just like wanted as long as you can remember. As long as I can remember, yeah. I feel like I've been doing it forever. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. grew up. I grew up. It's going, fair to say you grew up fighting like combat sports. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 definitely. Play. I remember doing karate lesson once, taekwondo lesson once. Mm. It used to take me different things, but it's always rough and ready kickboxing, man. That was that was where I learned. What's the first fight you remember having? What do you mean? Boxing? Just in general. In life? Just in life. The first fight. The first fight I clearly remember having mm. is with this Scottish guy that used to live around the corner from my house. Mm. And what, what age is this? I was young, though. Mm. I used to roll with this guy called Champ. Mm. Big black guy called Champ. You remember yeah, Champ? Yeah, I remember Champ. Still. Ronaldo. <laughs> and he made me have a fight yeah. with this guy called Sam Gotts. I probably remember he, his face. He, he made me have yeah. a fight with this guy mm. and I lost. But I was young and Gotts, mm. he was... He was big. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first fight I remember yeah. having, but I know I had mm. fights before that. Mm. Did you ever feel like, uh, obviously you said your big brothers would, were into fighting and all that. Was there ever any like pressure to try and live up to that? If you, Of if course. You, yeah. yeah, of course, man. Mm. Yeah. You always I mean, mm. yeah, growing up, my, my dad was quite cool around the town. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Curtis Jr., man. Mm. Is, as long as you can remember, there's always been... An expectation, up. I should say. You, you yeah. felt like there's an expectation that, yeah, you should be able to handle yourself. You should be, you should able, be able to look able. after myself, exactly. Yeah. It's been good learning boxing. Look where it's taken me. It's taken me into mm. a, in a good direction in life. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I think there weren't... When I was growing up, education was different. Mm. So I wasn't educated on the correct times to fight. There's times when I've just fought for no reason. Mm. And I think... If you're going to teach people boxing and fighting or whatever now, you need to teach them education with it. It's like if you don't know how to fight, you're not going to fight. Mm. Do you know, if you know how yeah. to do something, yeah. you're going to, if you know how to drive a car, you're going to drive your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, I'm not proud that I used to fight a lot. I'm not the hardest guy in the world. I'm not mm. proud of that. But at the same time, it's taking me to a good place. But yeah, education, man, with fighting and all that. It's kind of like a discipline. Just yeah, to show you, you've like, got to be a bit more disciplined yeah. with it. You know, Marvel... Spider Man and his yeah, uncle Ben's yeah, yeah. doing great power because mm. great responsibility. Yeah, Somebody should have said mm. that to me when I was young because I remember kicking people mm. in the head and stuff when I was 14, man. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can't do that. Do. That's a. I done Taekwondo, yeah. Yeah, I remember and that. It's, um, I remember, yeah. That's something they they proper instill that. Yeah. So I'll give them I'll give them credit for that still. Yeah, they okay. instill that there. In a way, they kind of just show you, yeah, you'll break a man up so you don't have to. Yeah. It's like, yeah. This and that's is, it. We're showing you this, so you're gonna be levels in it. He's not level, so even if he don't know it, mm. you can allow it. Like you don't that's have it. to prove it to you. That's it. Back to the boxing side of it, the career side. What's the next steps? I got fight coming up. I don't know if you see that on my Instagram. Mm. I've got a, a fight coming up in March for the Southern Area title. Sick. So that is the next step, man. I'm I'm back. Mm. I've been training hard the last couple of weeks, but I'm back in proper camp. How long's the average camp for you? Six weeks. Okay. But I've been yeah, training yeah, hard so yeah. for the last week and a half. Yeah. yeah. I'll be always training, but, but train, I've upped the levels the last week and a half. Would you say there's a goal in mind where it's like, for me to feel content 
in my boxing career, this is what I'd... Once I got here, that's something I'd like to achieve. I'd be happy. I'd be like, all oh, right. I just want to be the best, man. Yeah. I just want to be the best I can be. Yeah. That's a <laughs> I good answer, I didn't do man. this to, that's a to good be answer. second best. So. Mm. You got any career regrets? And I say career, but... It don't even have to be just since 2016, the pro career. Like, how long was you amateur? I was amateur for for years, since yeah. I was like 17, it's not 18. Do you know how many fights you had? As an amateur, mm. 40, 35, 40, yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you know how the record was? I lost probably about 10. So you got any career regrets? Through boxing, yeah, just, mm. I wish I... I like we was just talking about discipline. I wish I was yeah. more disciplined through my life. Yeah. With the things that I was doing, things that I'm doing. So, I mean, it's ongoing battle, man, with this discipline thing. So, Certain lifestyle things might have been counterproductive to... The I used to have a lot of fun when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too much fun, mm. man. I, I used to get drunk and... Mm. I remember getting drunk and fighting the next day. Mm. You do things like that. Yeah. I wish I never done that. You got a career highlight so far. So not the fight I just had. The fight before that, mm. that was yeah, a career highlight a sick for fight. me. Sick, yeah. sick, sick. That was, a, that was a career highlight, man. He's a good, good opponent. He was the army guy, innit? Um, I think he's a paratrooper. A pa- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah sick. And that fight. was a ten round mm. fight, and I was, I was happy with that. Yeah. Very happy with that performance, especially off of the back of the camp I had. So it was good. I only had a four week camp because I was in Jamaica. Mm. Um, Enjoying, enjoying my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, a thirteen-year-old tells you, "Yeah, I'm looking to get, looking to get into boxing. I want to like, my dream is to be like a world champion one day. Like, you got any advice for me? What do you say to him? I've had people say that to me, and I will just say, "You got to train, man. You got mm. to train. You, you've got to train. You've got to run. That's it. Yeah. At that, at that stage, you've just got to get super fit mm. because fitness is what will get you through." In so the early stages. The running, that's one of the most important aspects. I think so, but there's yeah. fighters out there that don't run. But yeah. I think like I think running is, is, is very important, man. Just solely for the fitness aspect. Fitness so and yeah. Mm. Yeah. But not just physical fitness, mental fitness as well. Mm. If you go for them long runs and you're like, oh, I might stop now. And you and you force yourself to keep going, that helps. Go through the wall. Go yeah. through mm. that wall. If you're mm. doing sprints and stuff in the cold on a Friday at nine o'clock. Yeah, mm. on your own. If you mm. can do that, yeah, yeah, then fighting ain't gonna be nothing. <laughs> yeah. So you got you got to run, man. That is what I say to anybody who tells me they're about to have a fight. I say just run, go running, just mm. just run, don't stop running because you're gonna forget everything else. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'll bring your kids up boxing? <sighs> After my last two camps, mm. I said, nah, forget it, mm. forget it, man, because mm. it's hard. It's very, very hard. After my mm. last two fight camps, I said, you know what? I ain't even interested in getting my kids to fight no more. Mm. I used to make my boy go kickboxing. Yeah. Ah, I just don't care about that no more, yeah. man. But mm. if he wants to do it... You won't stop him, but you're not going to actively encourage I'm, him to... Mm. I probably will actively encourage him, but mm. only for self-defence. Mm. But I don't want him to be a boxer, nah. Yeah. Is there any little traits you see in him where you're like... He could be sick. Though. What do you mean? What just physical like, traits? Yeah, just anything like reaction time or anything like. Not really. He's better yeah. with his feet though. Yeah. Man, always he's always kicking. Mm. He's always trying to yeah. kick me and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, <laughs> frustrates me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop kicking me, man. Yeah. But he's, he keeps running around. He keeps running mm. around talking about I'm the king boxer. I'm the mm. king boxer. Yeah. That's his thing now. He's yeah. the king boxer. Mm. So I mean, it's it's good that I'm doing it and I do it because. It's obviously having a positive effect. I think it's having a positive effect on them. So mm. I'll keep boxing till I get where I need to be and stuff. Yeah. yeah.